Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we are going to be smashing a few bugs in our video game. So what I mean by that is we got a couple of issues with our project at the moment and we are going to be fixing them up. The most important of all of those is when I walk up to an enemy and I try and hit it with my sword, sometimes it is going to hit it twice rather than just once and that is because we're using an overlap based system whereby when we swing it when it overlaps it's going to create an event. If I hit it from an angle such as the arm and it goes through the arm and into the body it's going to hit that print, stink, print string twice. So let me show you if I can pretty much make it look exactly how I want it to. So this is I'm going to make it look exactly how it is for you. So if I press play real quick run up to an enemy and then go from the side here press 1 you can see it hits it twice which isn't great. So it only takes two hits to kill the enemy as opposed to four like it should be. So that's something that we're going to be fixing up in today's video. It's really simple and really easy um, along with some fixes for the loot bag pickup making sure that you can pick it up just like that. So starting up with the simple AI what we're going to do is come up with a solution for this. Now I'm just going to go with the easiest option for now which is essentially to just put in a delay in there and then after that delay it can be hit again. So we have a variable time dollar delay and it can only be hit whilst that variable is true. So let me show you if I can break C and show you and try and break this down for you. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm going to create a variable in the bottom left hand corner here called can be hit with melee just like that and with the variable type try and change this to a boolean as it needs to be a true or false value. It's as simple as that. Can it be hit? Yes or no. With this, what we're going to do then, after we've done the check to see if slash sword is true, we are going to run another check, so get a reference to can be hit with melee, drag it out and turn this into a branch node. With this, hook this up to true, and then for this, if it can be hit with melee, set this to true, and just hook this up to your print string here. False, if can be hit with melee and it's trying to register a double attack, we don't want it to do anything, so set that to false just like this. So we've got this system set up now. So what we need to do now then is pretty much after when you hit the character you want to set it to false for the remaining time of the animation so it doesn't register that, that double hit. So what we're going to do then to create this is go all the way to the end here where we're checking to see if the player is dead. If it's true we're destroying the actor. If it's false and we want it to carry on we pretty much need to tell it to set can be hit with melee to um, untrue and then after this we want to drag this out and we want to turn this into a delay and the delay duration we're going to use a rough number of about one um, as generally we, you know the whole animation length is 1.5 seconds but the thing is we don't want it to wait you know the whole animation cycle I mean the next hit could be sort of part way through so one is a pretty good number. Now bear in mind this system isn't the best way to do it it's just the easiest. So after this one second what we want to do is set can be hit with melee back to true and this is going to allow the player to hit that AI again. Default value you can see at the moment it's going to be untrue. Select your can be hit with melee in the bottom left here and just make sure you set this to true so that by default they can hit the AI with its first hit. So if we compile this, press play, run up to one of these and then just go and try and swing at it. You can see here if I make sure I'm not hitting two. If I hit this you can see now it's only registering one per hit and that is perfect. That's exactly how I wanted it. So there's a couple of other bugs that I wanted to fix in addition to this. Um, one being that you can't pick up the loot bag at the moment with your version of the project. It's a really simple and really easy fix. All you've got to do is up in this bit here for begin overlap you will have a bad cast node. Just change this other actor to cast to sword character and then just drop this in here. Now with this begin overlap you can only use this with one character or one other actor. What we need to do is also set this up for the magic character. So get your box overlap on component begin overlap. We want to do pretty much the same thing for our magic character as well. So we also know that it's going to work for that. So drag out from other actor and then cast to your magic character. 
I mean, you could be lazy and just drag this up to all the stuff here, but note you can see we've got actor location for this character. We don't want to use the one for the sword, we need our own one for this other character. So copy this little set, copy these three nodes, so control C and control V to paste those in, and then for the target of the get actor location, just hook this up to your magic character hit compile and then close that and now no matter what if you kill an enemy and then you pick up that little loot bag you know it's going to work 100% regardless of which of the characters you're using. So moving on there's also one other little issue that I wanted to fix and that was that when I walk forwards and then release the you know the forward arrow you can see this is jerky movement on the character it doesn't look that great the whole thing's not that smooth so I'm going to be showing you how to fix that and the way that we're going to be doing this is by going into the animation blueprint for our sword character and setting it up in the same way as we did for our magic based character so open up your anim bp and then if you go to your state machine just here, you can see we've only got two states. Whereas in the other character, we also had an idle state. And it's that idle state which pretty much allows that fade between the sword attack and the idle. So what we're going to do is break this link by holding down alt and then clicking on it, drag out from entry, add a state for idle, and simply just name it idle. And then from this, drag a link over to sword attack. Sorry. This is backwards at the moment for whatever reason. We want to have it laid out a bit like this. So we want to have idle going to movement and we also want idle going to sword attack there and back. So just take a quick look at what I've got right now and it should look exactly the same. So we're going from idle to and back from sword attack and also going to movement and back from to idle from the movement. So. What we need to do now then is with this idle, just pretty much just double click it to open it up and we want to put in an idle animation. Go to your asset browser in the bottom right hand corner, type in idle and it's going to give you a list of all of the animations that can be run with this skeleton with that name idle. And the one we're after is called simply sword and shield idle, click, drag and drop this in and hook it up to your result. If we compile this, you're going to see we get a couple of errors. These are because we haven't set up these transitional rules. So pretty much what we need to do is start off with the movement ones. Um, for whatever reason, I've got two states here, so I'm going to break this link. If you don't have two two transitional rules here, don't worry about it. It's going to press. It's going to break this link if I can. So I'm actually just going <laughs> to see if I can do it. I'm just going to delete the idle state for now, even. Just drag this out, create it again. You guys won't have this issue, don't worry about that. Just create these states, one, two, and then just drop this in here, and then going back. So, let's put this idle animation in again, hook this up to your result, and then we're back to where we was about five seconds ago. So, the state going from idle to movement is really simple. Open this up and we want it to go into the movement state if the speed is higher than 10. So what we're going to do is get our speed float greater than float and then hook this up into the condition for can enter transition. Set your speed over here to 10. That's that one done. Moving on and we want to go going back from movement to idle. We're pretty much going to do the opposite. Get our speed and then just do float less than and just drop that in there and it's less than 10 that we're looking for just like this so if the speed drops below 10 it's going to go into the uh, the idle animation state compile this some of our errors go away and now we only need to do it for the sword attack with this we can copy the information we've got over here so get the one for going from movement to sword attack first open it up and you can see all it is is just slash sword. So grab that, control C to copy it, go into here, and then just paste it in for your idle to sword attack. And now get the one for going back from sword attack to movement. So double click this to open it up. And all we're doing is checking to see if it's equal to not true. Copy this by holding down control C with this selected. And then go back from sword attack to idle. And then just paste this in here. If we compile this, press play, you're going to see it's still a little bit jerky. And the reason why it is jerky is because we haven't set up an a interpolation time to handle this. So what I'm going to have to do is open up my walk run blend space, 
go to my left hand side here and set interpolation time to 1 for both the direction and the speed. If we press play now, you can see it's nice and smooth when we turn, when we walk left, forwards, backwards, and all of that good stuff. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for our today's video. Um, hopefully you guys have got most of your bugs with your project out of the way. There is nothing more that I can see with the RPG project. If you do have any more issues, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below, and I will get straight onto it. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Curtis, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.